Kendrick Melvin Nunn, born August 3rd, 1995. Today's feature is a player that had a real chance to shock the world as the first undrafted player since 2007 to make the NBA All-Rookie First Team. He averaged over 15 points per game in 29 minutes that season and really looked like an important piece to the Miami Heat future. No one would have guessed he would only play one more season in Miami and just three years total in the league. Kendrick Nunn was a high school standout as rare as they come, having his jersey retired to the rafters at Simeon High School, joining Jabari Parker, Derrick Rose, and local legend Benji Wilson. The future was bright for Nunn, and what most liked about him was he was an absolute bucket. There wasn't a shot he didn't believe he could make, nor a player he didn't feel he was better than in the 2018 draft. A draft Jerome Robinson, who never averaged at least 10 points per game in the league, went 13 overall. Sayer Smith, who played just two seasons after being a first round 16th overall pick, leading six straight shooting guards taken back to back, none of them named Kendrick Nunn, and none of them produced like him in just his first two seasons in the NBA. No worries, because Nunn, after initially getting an opportunity with the Golden State Warriors, found his best fit being signed by the Miami Heat and immediately becoming an impact player. The Heat, to my personal dislike, made it to the NBA Bubble Finals his rookie season and provided no match for the Lakers, being beaten 4-2 in a series that never was in doubt. Hence why I never wanted an overachieving team facing a seasoned and rested LeBron James and Anthony Davis and the Lakers. Either way, it capped off one of the biggest success stories of an undrafted player ever. In his second season, his scoring may have dipped, but his numbers just about across the board improved. Validating none was still a really nice piece for the Heat, and no question still had value in the league. Rookies of the Month, 16 points in the Rising Star Challenge, second in Rookie of the Year voting to Ja Morant, and an average of 15 points while shooting over 36% from three for his Miami Heat career meant little in the grand scheme of Kendrick Nunn sticking around as he'd be traded from the team to the Lakers where he didn't fit well with a ball-dominant LeBron and Anthony Davis focus on offense, slowing down his style of play. The Lakers used him for just 39 games before they realized his non-value, trading him again to the 35-win Washington Wizards with whom he lasted just 31 games. At this point, it was a shock none didn't evolve into a more important player in the NBA, seeing the first two seasons he had. One as a scorer, only Kevin Durant was better than in that span. His next and only step overseas, where he's playing well, but mostly forgotten by NBA fans. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Kendrick Nunn is a 6'2 shooting guard from Chicago, Illinois, that starred for Fame Simeon Career Academy who produce future NBA stars like Nick Anderson, Derrick Rose, Jabari Parker, Taylor Horton Tucker, and more, including none. Can't forget Benji Wilson, who was the best player in the country and a top prospect before he was gunned down right outside the school. None was so talented he received his first scholarship offer in his freshman season, leading to a Jersey retiring career, winning four state titles, making them the first Chicago public school to do so. He originally committed to Texas A&M before reopening his recruitment and later committing to Illinois, improving every season before things took a turn. Stunt number one, disciplinary issues caused him to slip. The biggest reason I respect Kendrick Nunn's journey is all he had to go through just to get to the NBA and having one of the best rookie seasons in 2019-20. It could have went a different way, but Nunn had a setback his junior year of college that in large part caused him to go undrafted in the first place. Being one of the top prospects his senior year of high school, playing for a storied program, having his jersey retired, Nunn was a sought-after recruit that Illinois were lucky to have landed. For a long time, the state has had issues keeping in-state talent, and Nunn was one that had other options. His improvement over his four years was impressive to say the least. He went from averaging 6 points per game his freshman year to 11 points a game as a sophomore, 
15.5 points a game as a junior, on his way to possibly leading the Fighting Alani to their first NCAA tournament berth since he arrived on campus. As a junior, he finished averaging 15, 5, and shot 39% from 3, along with playing 35 minutes per game for the team. Then after the season, he and then-girlfriend experienced a domestic violence situation where he was accused of hitting her in the head, disturbing his neighbors to the point the police had to be called to their place. But it didn't stop there, because the university took action and expelled Nunn from the school, also meaning his departure from the team. A month later, he transferred to the University of Oakland, where he'd have to sit out an entire year, which could have been another year added to his pro career, which would be important later on. At Oakland, he was one of the top scorers in the country, averaging 25 points per game, shooting 39% from three, and leading the NCAA in three-pointers made per game at 4.5. For only Trey Young, who was a top 5 pick to have a better scoring season than none, you'd expect him to at least be taken or even considered in the draft. But because of his disciplinary issues in college, ones taken very seriously by the NBA, no team saw it feasible to take the trouble scoring star and he went undrafted. As you know, undrafted players usually have no guarantees and can be released or shipped off at any time which Miami ended up doing after two successful seasons to begin his career. He'd never be the same since. Stunt number two, bone bruise in the knee. After all the examples of valuable play in Miami, Kendrick Nunn's qualifying offer with the Heat was still rescinded by the team. I couldn't understand it because Nunn was supposed to be the future. He held the Heat record for fastest rookie to 500 career points in franchise history, a game before D. Wade. Not as dynamic as Wade in any sense, but the accomplishments he had with the Heat should have allowed him room to continue developing. He signed with the Lakers August 2021 and in October suffered a bone bruise that changed the course of his career. The Lakers were expecting Nunn to come in and be an important piece next to LeBron and AD, providing scoring in the starting rotation or off the bench. Scoring is what Nunn specialized in, so seemed like a non-issue heading into the 21-22 season. The bone bruise changed everything. He had to sit out an entire year and when he returned the following season, he either wasn't the same player or the Lakers had filled his position and had no need for him. Either way, his minutes decreased drastically from his first two seasons in Miami, going from 30 a game to just around 13 in LA after a serious injury. After 39 games, the Lakers got rid of him, trading him to the Wizards for Rui Hachimura and second round picks, where he'd play in his final 31 games before being completely out the league, what looks like for good. He averaged 6.7 points a game with the Lakers and 7.5 with the Wizards. At just 27 years old, he was not re-signed, instead signing in Greece for one of its top teams. Although an opportunity, I don't see it leading to him being back in the NBA, as he barely made it the first time, experienced a really bad injury, and never looked the same thereafter. Stunt number 3, Adding More Than Scoring Kendrick Nunn for his entire basketball career was arguably out of position in the first place as a shooting guard playing point guard. Some sites have him listed as a point guard as well as shooting guard, but anyone who has seen him play can understand he was never really a point guard at all. Nunn was a scorer, and for his class one of the best scorers if given an opportunity. One of the reasons he wasn't allowed the opportunity throughout his career in the NBA was because he really didn't add much more than scoring to a team, especially projecting him as an NBA point guard. As a shooting guard, he was extremely undersized, especially on the defensive end, and his anticipation left much to be desired. Maybe the reason he averaged .7 steals for his career. On offense, it didn't affect him much, but as we know, the game is played on both ends, and a player that doesn't add to one side will always be of less value than one who does. For his career, he averaged 2.4 assists and 2.4 rebounds, further displaying a lack of value in areas outside putting the ball in the basket. Miami also had a choice to make at shooting guard, with Tyler Hero, their 13th overall pick in the draft, right after Nunn went undrafted the year before. 
With none playing the way he did, the Heat would have had to pay him sooner than they would Tyler Hero, and likely big money seeing none was developing much faster in his role than thought. After injuring himself in LA, his value really slipped in all areas including scoring, leading to him washing out the league. All in all, I really believe early on Kendrick Nunn had the confidence and skills to challenge an NBA All-Star selection one day and definitely should have been given more opportunity in Miami, where he showed he was ready from day one. He's currently overseas, who knows if he'll get that second opportunity or if he even cares to at this point. Solid NBA player, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.